This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. It's uh, me, Sonia, hanging out with you today, and I'm so happy I'm here with Dave. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Dave, you guys probably already know this. He's my wonderful husband. Um, Josh is dad. Um, he does great at both. He's also the dude that makes the podcast get to you. Because Josh and I just run our mouths. <laughs> and then we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so, so Dave does all the magic and makes it happen. So the other day when he was sick, we were like, uh... What do we do? What <laughs> we do, we don't, do we do? We don't know. <laughs> so that's why we missed uh, a week before last. So you have to stay healthy, Dave. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm so happy that you're doing this. I know that you don't like doing podcasts. No. <laughs> you don't like it. You think that you don't like how you sound, <laughs> which happens all the time. Whenever I've had people on here, they're like... Um, you know, oh, that's how I sound? So, they don't like it too much. But I need you to be here today because I want to talk about SSI. Okay. And um, it's something that... Uh, SSI is something that Josh has been on since he was 18. And what that is is... Um, well, in order... To, SSI is something that people get from the Social Security office in the United States. And... Um, they have to have a permanent disability, and they have to be diagnosed with that permanent disability before they're age 26. Right. Okay. And SSI means? Social Security. Supplemental oh, supplement. Security Income. I've seen it a million times, and I just got it wrong. <laughs> supplemental. Security Income. Okay. So, essentially, um, it's not much. Um, I think Josh gets right around seven fifty a month, um, and it's kind of tricky because you know he started working, and us trying to find out the rules and regulations and how that works because it's scary because being on SSI is something that with a person with a disability, it's going to help them to at least eat, you know, because he gets that he gets. A little bit of money for food. Food stamps and Medicaid. No, not, yeah. Anybody on SSI automatically qualifies for Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Right. So Josh had been diagnosed, and he had been to all the doctors, and when he turned 18, um, everybody recommended, and then they said that we would just get something from Social Security, which we did, and um, we um, provided documentation. And so by the time when he was 18, he just automatically started getting the the SSI. When you work, which is where he is right now, it's kind of delicate because you've got to figure out... You, like, we want him to work. I think both of us... What we want is for him to be so successful and move out. <laughs> um, in the meantime... Um, he needs a lot of help um, figuring out the money, figuring out what he can make without losing SSI. Um, and that number is different to lose SSI and to lose Medicaid, which is confusing to me. Um, this is what I know about it. I'll just say this, and then you're the one that's been working with him. So right. up until this point, um, I've always done the all the documentation, all the uh, uh, updates, what have you, to SSI. And this time, when he started working, I was like, you do it. <laughs> well, I like <laughs> the numbers. It. I like working with numbers, so yeah. that helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is what I know, that whatever Josh gets paid, um, SSI looks at it like this. They say, the first $85... 75 Okay. There's twenty dollars that's a general income exclusion and then sixty five earned income exclusion. So you're right, eighty five. I like you're working numbers with numbers. Guy. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I I just been doing this for a long time. <laughs> so so um, the first eighty five dollars, um, just is is they don't even count. So he can make somebody on SSI can make eighty five dollars a month, and it doesn't get there's run, no penalty. There's no penalty whatsoever. It it's just kind of taken out. Then. Um, tell us how it works after that. Okay, so they they take your gross wages before taxes. So, and they say a person made, um, say they made $400 in one month. So, the entire amount of gross payments they received in that month, they would immediately take off the first $85 and not count that. So, that leaves $315. So, that $315, they would divide by two. And that comes up to... 155 157.50. Right. That is what your check, your SSI check, would be reduced by. And that reduction does is not two months happen later. until two months later. Right. So you've set a system up. You'd built a database um, to keep track of this so that Josh is okay because, you know, he's got things that he's got to pay. Right. He's got to pay rent here. Right. Um, you know. He's, so no matter what happens, that when those two months come by and his check is reduced by that amount... That money has been the the money that that he made while he was working. We took that amount and set it aside so that it'll always be available two months later. So he has a full check. So, right, right. So, in other words, um, and this is how it's done. So he works. Let's say he worked last month which was February, and he made the amount that you just said. Mm -hmm. So then you two have to go to the Social Security office by the 5th of each month, the following month. So let's say he worked February, made the money, the two of you go down to Social Security office with the pay, his pay stubs um, and turn them in by the 5th of the next month, in this case it's March, but, but he's not going to see the money removed from his SSI check that he made in February until April. So they take it out in April. Right. So what will happen is, I said that he makes 750 Well, in that case, he, they're going to take 750 and they're going to deduct one, what did we just say it was? One fifty seven fifty was what, the, what we said it was. Um, Which is not right. <laughs> if you're relying on me for math, uh, probably not. But um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, wait, wait a second. It's three fifteen. Three fifteen so, so divided three, by half of three hundred is one fifty. Half right. of fifteen is seven fifty. So it's one fifty seven fifty. Wait, wait. <laughs> what kind of universe are we in today where I'm doing better math than I you? I don't know. Okay, so... <laughs> this is so, so bizarre. There's three ways that people can report their income. Okay. And one is walking into the Social Security office and giving them your pay stubs. You have to give them your originals, right? That's really important. You So make a copy of the original if you're doing it in the other... In a different method. So what will happen on the original method is that by going into the Social Security office, you give them their pay, your pay stubs, and those pay stubs will be copied, and they will be handed back to you. So you have that pay stub. You'll always have the pay stub. Wait, you have in to that, make a copy in that before method. you go? No, no, no. Oh. They make the copy. Okay. So... There's two other ways that they recommend. One is called SSI telephone reporting, which is um, where you call a phone number and you say, this is how, many, how much my gross wages were for this month. Or an SSI mobile reporting. And then the mobile is like an app. So 
one of those um, um, methods. This, the third method is you mail in your um, your pay stubs. pay stubs. Now, I was told by an expert who actually discussed all these benefits with Josh and with me um, that unless you actually go down there and give them the pay stubs, then they don't count that as being uh, the other methods as being um, uh, official. So you, they officially saw your pay stub if you walk down there. If not, then they don't consider that as an official pay stub method of delivering um, the reporting. So we always go down there. That's yeah. the reason we keep we, going down there. Yeah, but how weird is that? They have it set up. Like they came up with this process yes. for you to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Because what if somebody doesn't drive? What if somebody... Right, right. And you know, that's why. And, that's... And, and they have to call it in. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's still better than not doing anything. It is. It is. So, it's just that you feel, you and Josh, or you, because Josh just goes with you. Yeah. You make him go with you. Right. Um, well, it's his money. <laughs> right. Right. And because that's another part of this whole thing, mm-hmm. is that we've told him flat out, we're not doing these things for you. We're participating with you, right. helping you with it, but we're not doing it right. for we you. We want him to be responsible. Just like when he gets a check... Uh, I've told him, you know, we'll, you know, we can help you get up to the bank to deposit it, but we're not going to do it for you. Right. You have to participate in all of this, these aspects of your life. So that's why you take him down there each time because you feel like it's safer. Yeah, and then, well, no, it's more, it's it's always um, guaranteed that they make it official. Okay. They officially saw that pay stub. Now, it took three months of going down to the Social Security office and sitting there for four hours, five hours, six hours sometimes to understand the best way to go through. And now we're there 20 minutes. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Tell everybody how how to do that then. Okay, so when you walk into a Social Security office, they have a, a, a kiosk where you walk up and you punch in your numbers and the reason why you're there. So you got to say that um, uh, here's my social security number, and um, and here's the reason that you're here. Now, if you're reporting for your child or your adult with this with it's your disabled dis- adult, you type in your social security number, not their social security number. So you're the one reporting. Anyone that's talking to the Social Security office, they want their Social Security number. Okay. So the kiosk says five different um, five different options of of um, what you can do, what you can punch in, and they are benefit verification letter. Social Security card, file for benefits, report a change, or more reasons. And you're always going to select report a change. When you select report a change, it says, I receive SSI. You click on that, you're in. You're going to be seen in 20 minutes or less. (laughs) That's the way to do it. So it's report a change, I receive SSI. So um, (laughs) if you don't do that... Expect to be there all day. <laughs> yes. And when you're first signing up for SSI or dealing with Social Security office, I mean, it just does take a long time. There's a lot of, and it depends on what time you go also, right? Yes. I mean, didn't you notice that here anyway, the afternoon is better than the morning? It is. Um, but that's just here. And, and again, like Josh and I say a lot of times on this podcast is that we only know about Josh. Mm-hmm. So the things that we're talking about, hopefully that's going to help um, anybody out there that's working on this, that's going through this, or um, in the future will go through this. Mm-hmm. But we just know how it has worked for Josh right. and what he's needed. Um, 
So, oh shoot, what was I just going to ask you about that? Something I don't know, about... but that's all right. I want to tell you something. Okay. So, it got to a point, me taking him down there, mm-hmm. that I am just... I don't like sitting in those chairs. Mm-hmm. I don't like waiting in that room that's full of people and having to watch. You watch for your number to be called and you listen. Mm-hmm. So Josh will get in there and read his phone because mm-hmm. he loves reading books. He dis- he disappears wherever he is. And I say, Josh, you have to, to pay attention because they might call your name. Well, it's to a point now that I go down I make sure that he pushes the right buttons, and then I go sit in the truck and I read. (laughs) (laughs) So, last... Does he tell you when it's time to go back into the room? Well, they they report, they call it over, okay? They'll say, ticket number such and such, report to this window. And so I'm sitting in the truck, and it's been maybe 10 minutes this last time. And Josh comes walking out the front door. I'm like, Josh, you're going to miss your call. He goes, I'm done. <laughs> he goes, what's interesting is they they called Sonia King. They didn't call my name this time. They called Sonia King. Yeah. Because I'm his payee. Right. So the last time that we were there, before that, they said ticket number. Mm-hmm. And the first time that we were there, they said Joshua King. So you have to pay attention. Mm-hmm. It might be anybody that you know. <laughs> it's the neighbor <laughs> down the road. Uh, <laughs> no, it might be any of uh, anybody that's taking that that's active in your account, or it might be you, or it might be a ticket number. So you just have to pay attention. Right. Um, so what's important about this, and it, it, I'm so happy that you've. I remember all the times when the therapist would come to the house, it was always about transferring of skills. Mm -hmm. So we learn something and then we teach him Mm -hmm. how to do it. And this is, it's so, it can feel so overwhelming that this was not something that, that Josh was able to do on his own. He couldn't figure out how to set this up. He, Mm -hmm. you know, this is definitely something that he needed to be taught and, and just by repetition, even going to the bank, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and we've said this before, he's 30 years old, um, but a really good friend, um, um, Jeff, that, that knows Josh very well, she says that he's, it seems to her more like a 17 year old, you know, and mm-hmm. I agree with that completely. Mm-hmm. Josh is just now getting to a point in his life where, um, He's able to, or willing, to, <laughs> <laughs> willing, yeah, 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 um, to 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 do these things, you know, and and also it comes to a point that we're teaching him, and we're saying this is not our stuff, we're not responsible for it, so you need to learn, you know, pay attention, and it's not like we bail on him before he's ready. Um, but it just he has to participate in all this stuff. So sometimes I think sometimes I think that um, it can feel so complicated and overwhelming that um, I really feel for folks that don't have somebody on their behalf to to do the research, to have the conversations with the the professionals like mm-hmm. you've done, and and then just you know real time show them how to do this. With Josh, one of the things that we've known throughout his life is that it's very hard for him to take information um, in one setting, information that he's gotten from one setting. Like, well, we could be sitting in this room, go through something with him, yet for him to go down to Social Security office and do that on his own, mm-hmm. he, it doesn't transfer. He can't take that information and then apply it in real time. No. So it was has been super important for us to... Um, show him in real time in the actual setting what to do um, I just think it's cool nobody told me that you went and sat out in the truck so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really cool that he's got a hang of it now so the, the something that concerned me when we first started finding out about SSI and the offset the money offset thing was um, if we don't report and we miss a month 
what happens then. So Social Security has it set up now that if you miss a month, then they will automatically think that what you reported the month before was your income for this month now also. And they will deduct that amount from your check two months later if you don't report it. So let's say, for instance, you have a temporary part-time job. And in one month, you made, let's say, $700. And that $700 was reported to SSI. So two months later, your check is going to be reduced by whatever amount. Mm -hmm. The next month, you made nothing because you weren't called to work at all. But you failed to report that to Social Security. So two months later, it's going to be reduced again by Mm -hmm. the amount of the last reported amount. So they think that you're still working. Even though you didn't report, they think that amount should be removed. So you, so, okay. So it's very important that you report every month. Even if you made zero, you go and report zero. Okay. By the fifth of the month. By the fifth of the month. Okay. So there, go ahead. Um, what happens if. (laughs) Sonia's raising her hand. What, 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 (laughs) what, what happens if, um, somebody, so let's just say Josh quit working. Right. And and so whatever this job didn't work out, he mm-hmm. quit working. Mm-hmm. What do you have to do to let them know that that's not that he's not working anymore? That's what you do. You walk in and you say, "I receive zero dollars this month, and I no longer work." Okay. Or I receive zero dollars this month. I expect to continue to work. Okay. Right. All right. right. So it depends on the cir- circumstance. So now we get to another fine point. When you, will will you always have your entire amount of wages, your gross wages reduced by these, this $85, uh, you're not looking at the 85, but half of whatever's left of that 85 after the first 85 is taken out. Mm-hmm. The answer is no. You can reduce that amount <laughs> wait, also. Wait, I was writing something. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Will a person, after the first $85 is taken out of those gross wage calculation, mm-hmm. will half of that amount always be deducted, deducted from the next check? No. You can reduce that amount also. How? By um, your expenses. So... Social Security allows for um, for different payments that can reduce it. One's called an IRWE, Impairment Related Work Expense. So oh, right. let's say, for instance, it's an expense that is not reimbursed to you. So it's it has to be um, an impairment uh, issue that deducts uh, money that you need to help do your job. Okay, so... It's like equipment or something? You don't have a car to get back and forth to work, Uh and you have to travel by trolley or or taxi or whatever. You don't have a bicycle. Let's say you buy a bicycle. That's a a good one. Mm -hmm. So you buy a bicycle. That's an expense that you had to take to get the back and forth to this work that otherwise... A normal person, one that doesn't have uh, one that's not on SSI, SSI. Mm-hmm. okay, um, that's that's horrible. I'm sorry. So <laughs> a person that doesn't have SSI that goes back and forth to work will either walk, they'll take their car, they'll take the bus, they'll take whatever mode of transportation. But a person that has that's under SSI with a disability normally has um, different expenses that are related to that disability specifically, they can't drive. They mm-hmm. So they have to find an alternate means. All right? So that expense, they can, they can write on their receipt, I-R-W-E, Impairment Related Work Expense, and their Social Security number, and submit that with their pay stub, and it reduces the amount taken out of their check by that amount. Let's say they need boots 
mm-hmm. a work expense. That's another thing. So, yeah, but those are just regular work expenses. They're, like, like, in like a person that does not have a disability mm-hmm. could ride a bike to school to work, or, which means they have to buy a bike. Right. Okay. So there's a thing called a subsidy and special conditions. All right. So subsidy and special conditions. Those two expense. Um, uh, Threshold. Th- those two expense issues, right? Oh, I thought One I was is right. related with doctors and saying, okay, you've got this thing that you need. Let's say, for instance, he needs, when you go to work, you need the special magnifying glass to see something, you know, or whatever. Right, or, 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 or earphones. Yeah, or silencing okay. right, headphones. All right, so right. I had it backwards. The impairment related work expense would be those type of okay. issues. Right. The subsidy and special conditions would be other issues. He needs to have um, certain clothing to wear. Okay. Like right. he did that's that. A, he had to buy another, boots. Yes. If you're not reimbursed for that, if they're not given to you, mm-hmm. and you had to pay for it out of pocket, you take those those uh, um, expenses, you write on there IRWE, your Social Security number, and you turn that in with your... With your um, um, okay, so, so here's a question. Um, Josh has been working now for a number of months... And when he started, he had to buy boots. Yes. Because he does pressure washing. So they're those big old like rubber boots. Mm-hmm. Um, is it too late now for him to... Because the, the receipt is going to say however many months ago? You know, I don't know that. Okay. I don't know. We can try and yeah. we can just write on there and, and drop it off and see what they say. Okay. Right? So, I mean, you never know. Right. It's the government. <laughs> <laughs> So, there's something something else. Okay. Um, Medicaid. Yes, that's a that's a big one. And you know, when he was 18, he was still in high school. Mm-hmm. And they we went down. They he got SSI, and they said, and he gets Medicaid. I said, he doesn't need Medicaid. He gets insurance through his his dad's. You know retired military he he has insurance mm-hmm. they said well you have to have medicaid and i said well i don't want to you know i don't want to take medic like i didn't know how it worked right so i said i don't want to take medicaid from somebody else when josh already has insurance so mm-hmm. we don't need to have it they said no you can't have one without the other right you can't have ssi without <laughs> having medicaid like well we don't need it and you know and 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 then in the very beginning they're like and here's this money i was like He's in high, he doesn't need this money. He's in high school. I just want to, you know, like we're told to apply. We're told to, to do this for him, for his future, that this is going to be very beneficial. Mm-hmm. But right now, he doesn't need it. They go, you got to take it. Yeah, it's part of I'm it. Like, right. all right. Um, but then you have to, you, you have to, like you can't just use that and go to Disney World. You know what I mean? You have to show what that was used for and and there's some regulations you we had to it's different now with ssi uh for the majority of the time that he's had it which is 12 years um every year we had to do a report and send it back into as the social security office giving the breakdown of what we was using what we were using the money for so we would use some for his part of the mortgage so some of it was clothing, uh, toiletries, you know, different different things that he needed. That's what it was used for. And we had to prove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, anyway, and the reason that the, how that's different now is that we just got something uh, this last year, 2018, saying that we don't have to do that anymore. What, uh, a, what a relief. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. Kind of got the, the, the hang of how to do it. Right. Um, but it just wasn't, it's just different now. And I don't know why that's different. Okay. I have no idea. No idea. So anyway, well, the, what's next? As long as some people might think that if someone is working and their SSI is reduced so much that it goes to zero, will they lose their Medicaid? 
and they won't as long as certain things are still in play. Well, let me... Okay. But first of all, this is important. That you you have to figure out... Like for us, for Josh, we have to figure out how much money can he make each month without losing SSI. Okay. And that's where we start. So, essentially, you say... Let's say seven fifty. So he could make so so you double that because since they take away, so it's not technical. All right, they take away eighty five dollars first. So fifteen hundred and eighty five dollars. That makes it zero. Um. So he could only really make. What, what did you say? It's fifteen hundred and eighty five dollars. So he could really only make fifteen, fourteen hundred ninety nine dollars. Right? In order, like, because he's still got to make something. He's still got to be eligible for SSI. Even if you're getting $10 from SSI, you're still currently getting money from SSI. So it doesn't go away. Right. Now, what you're about to talk about is the Medicaid that's attached to it. And what happens in Medicaid is we're talking about dental care, vision care, and medical care. Um, and... In some sort of circumstances, some some you know counseling and, and and services like that, right? Exactly. Yes. So, this is where I get really confused because with SSI, it's a certain amount to continue the SSI. But you found out that even if you're off, as, say you make more, because like the goal is bottom line, the goal is for Josh to get off SSI. It is. And I'll just say that that's a scary, this has been a, a, a scary um, endeavor on my part anyway, because he really, you know, we've like we've talked about now, Josh has a hard time doing things on his own without us being with him right there, showing him how to do something. He doesn't, he has a hard time thinking that through, going through that process and making that work, having everything in order. Well, let me um, let me first throw one thing in here. Okay. As long as someone still has their Medicaid um, and they're not getting a check, there's no SSI at all. It's just they're in a they're in not in an SSI cash payment status. Mm-hmm. If they're still getting Um, their Medicaid, then all they have to do um, is to report to the Social Security office, have their check recalculated, and it'll start up again. So they can get money again if they stop working or that money goes below the, the, the threshold of their entire check. So you can be off SSI entirely. As long as they're still getting Medicaid. Well, how do you still get Medicaid? Okay, so here's here's how that works. There is a thing called um, 1619B, Extended Medicaid Coverage. So they, uh, they call it 1619B for short. Anyhow, um, people are afraid that if they lose their SSI cash payments they also lose their medicaid and that's not that's not the case so um this provision 1619b says that um they keep their medicaid after um their earned income's too high Mm -hmm. as long as they meet certain requirements so the requirements are they have to have been eligible for an SSI cash payment at least once uh, for at least one month. Okay. They number two. They still need to meet SSA disability requirements. Okay. Number three, they meet Medicaid needs or use test, and that is that they have to have used their Medicaid in the last year. Um. They would need they need to use it if they became ill or injured. Or um, they need Medicaid to continue to work. Number four, 
they have to have a gross annual earned income less than the threshold of $30,960. Okay. And number five, they have to have um, countable unearned income less than $750 in resources under a something called a, a $2,000 limit for individuals with SSI. So they... Basically, if you have been on SSI, if you have a medical diagnosis saying it, if you got SSI for one month, if you um, have gross income under 30960 and there's a need for Medicaid, you continue to keep your Medicaid under 1619B. Okay. So one way or another, they still have the 1619B Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And... If their money drops in their income less than, like I said, fifteen hundred and eighty-five dollars mm -hmm. a month, mm -hmm. then they can have their SSI reinstated and and kept going. Okay, that's always the part of this that um, I, I guess I'm, I'm not like a big conspiracy person, but I feel also that when you're dealing with the government, uh, you, you really have to make sure that you've done everything. That you're supposed to do in order to make that happen. Because right. to me, I, I guess I just have the thought like, well, if he starts making more money, getting back on SSI. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. I know that it's written there that that, that would be the case. But it just always makes me feel like, oh, is that really the case? Right. I don't know right. if it is or it's not. You know, there is one more important thing about this. What? Is that we say about reporting your income. So you can report it to SSI so that they reduce your amount and everything. Mm -hmm. There's another thing you have to report also. If you're getting food stamps, you have to report that to the food stamps place. Well, in Florida, in Florida, I found out that food stamp reporting does not need to happen because when you report it to the Social Security Administration, they notify the food stamp authority. Right. So that's different. I don't know what your state is, but uh, whoever whoever's listening, but... In Florida, that's not necessary. Social Security Administration automatically lets Florida agency know. Well, it's also not called food stamps here. It's SunCap. Yes. So, and it's not the way that I used to think of food stamps. It's just this little card. Hmm. Um, and he's responsible for his own groceries. Yes, he is. Um, which he eats a lot. He does eat a lot. <laughs> um, but that's also something too. I mean, going it's still it's that's still an issue. Me going to the store with him, helping him compare prices, helping him to make the best decisions that he can. Well, thankfully, he likes shopping. He does. He does. Um, but these things that we're talking about, they're they're so important to be done the right way, to have documentation that you've done it all. Um, but when we're doing it, we're, you know, he's somebody that doesn't, wouldn't think of this on his own. Mm -hmm. Even right. when he's shown, he has to be reminded to do it. Mm -hmm. He has to be prompted to, because we've recently set up these, this checking account for him. And it, he's got to be reminded to check that, that he can't just go and spend money. He's got to make sure he has the money first. And, we're just, we've moved, like I said, you know, 30 years old going on, you know, 18. 18. <laughs> so we're back where we're still just teaching him, you know, the ins and outs and how to be smart about it and how to be um, responsible with, with what he's making. And, and, you know, so that's part of it, too. It's not just a simple thing. Like, left up to him, it, it wouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. But it's super, super important. Well, talking about um, having a checking account, the law allows another thing where he can have um, savings more than the $2,000 limit under a certain program. And that there, there's a book that you can get at the Social Security office called the Red Book. And the Red Book explains all kinds of stuff and it goes into detail. It's a user's guide. It's not the, uh, it's not the the actual. It's called a summary guide to employment sur supports for persons with disabilities under the Social Security Disability Insurance 
and Supplemental Security Income Programs. I just read what it's called. So it's the Red Book. And the Red Book, um, being a summary guide, doesn't have all the intricate details, but it talks about it in a layman's term where we can understand and says, okay, if you do this, then this is what happens. So um, the, the, the program that I wanted to mention that I'm not going to get into details with because it's pretty complex, but um, it's, uh, it's called the ABLE Act, and it's Achieving a Better Life Experience Act of 2014. And what it does is it allows for um, uh, people that are on SSI to have total assets less than $100,000 and still be qualified. So, um, uh, and that's explained in the Red Book. So there are other programs that are available. I just wanted to make sure that that was out there. And something that I've found out going through all this too is that uh, I was always thought that two thousand dollars, like Josh, could only he could not ever have anything, um, any savings account more than two thousand dollars, or any asset more than two thousand dollars. Well, I found out that that's wrong. He can have a car. He can have you know a, a car that's worth more than two thousand dollars, so that he can go to school. He can go to work. He can. Do whatever it is he's doing. I have always been under the assumption that he could uh, he couldn't have that because it wasn't really explained. Right. I was just always two thousand dollars. He can't have anything more. You know, he a person on SSI can own a home. They can own a condo. They can you know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because sometimes they might inherit something like that. You know, mm. and you know, I mean, that's a whole other set of taxes and rules, but. Anyway, that was something new. And now my head is spinning, so <laughs> we need to stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know that, that um, for everybody listening, I hope that some of this, you know, that it made sense. I hope that it um, it helped. There's, you know, this red book is very helpful, but, you know, also just maybe hearing the stuff that we've been through with Josh is, is helpful, too. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's been fun. Yeah. And we never know what's going to happen in the middle of this podcast. I got a call from Josh, you know, saying he's getting frustrated because his coworker that's on the spectrum is is doing things a particular way that Josh's particular way is not meshing with. <laughs> uh, so I was like, oh, no, just uh, it never ends. Never ends. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, cool. I thank you for not only for doing this today with me, but for also d- doing this with Josh. I really appreciate it, and so I don't have to. No problem. Yeah. Um, so everybody, thank you for so much for hanging out out with us again. I know this is a little bit different than it normally is, um, but uh, we thought that it was worthwhile. Something that's important to get out there, and uh, uh, I don't know if, if you're listening from another country. I don't know what's out there but i would assume there's benefits like this um out there for for your kiddos that are on the spectrum but um thank you for hanging out with us thank you for listening um if you like it give us a five star review um find us on youtube you can go to my website um s-o-n-y-a-k-i-n-g that's sonyaking.com um like i said you can give us five stars that would be freaking awesome and um uh, yeah and and share us with other people so um you know if it's if we've helped you at all hopefully we can help other people as well too but um we appreciate you so much and uh we'll talk to you next time love you bye